Hi, this video is to help better understand how to deal with this error message that you see, this warning about security vulnerabilities in your dependencies. And if you look at this, you can see that it's yellow. It's going to kind of, I think, sort of stain your your repo, right? It's it, it sets up alert to anybody looking at it that you may have security vulnerabilities and they might not want to work with it or might not think you're maintaining it. So how to get around this and what you could do to start with, we're going to see that they that GitHub is what's generating this, but they also provide a way to help mediate it. So if you look at the security alerts themselves, it shows you the pack. It shows you the packages that are causing these, and usually it's some kind of a little way into some part of your web application that you don't want really to have opened up that's been detected by a developer and alerted and this has been set up. And you'll notice that the, the it points to package lock JSON as being the culprit of this. And so what is package lock JSON? Well, to understand that you have to kind of take a look at uh, what that package lock JSON is all about. So we know about package JSON. It allows us to install dependencies and dev dependencies. And if you've ever looked at this version, you can see there's like a major, a minor, and a patch level. This is called semantic versioning SEMVAR. And it's worth doing a little reading on this because it is an important part of understanding your code when you're working in the NPM space. Um, and if you look, uh, you can Google a node source, you can Google what are these symbols in front of these versions mean. Like this is the caret symbol. And I think this is the, what led us into having package lock. So in the early days there was a tilde and that allowed you to, uh, if you did an NPM install it would try to grab the latest version up to but not including the next level of the of the minor version. So like if I'm at tilde one, two, three, I could go all the way up to but not including 1.3. And then when we got the caret, it opened it up a little more so that if I had caret one, two, three, it would go all the way up to the next major version. Well, that introduced some issues, um, in, especially in enterprise computing, where you know you had developed it at a certain level, a certain version, and when people were installing it or your build process was installing it, it was taking it all the way up to the next major version. So the decision was made to lock that down, and the way that they did that was with package lock. So when you do an NPM install and you're encouraged to check in package lock, it basically figures out all of the various versions of every single code in all of your dependency tree, everything, even things that you did not NPM install, but what your, your libraries installed, and it locks them down so that it's like sort of guaranteed to work at that version. Um, but it can get complicated, and then what happens is um, there are vulnerabilities found in some of these versions, and GitHub is detecting that and alerting you to that. So what can you do about it? Uh, and you can look a little closer at these things and it will tell you, well, one thing you could do is you could go into your package JSON, you could delete your package lock, you could delete your node modules, and you could add the next, great. you could have this greater than or equal to to ensure that you got up to a version that got you past this past the whatever the version with the security vulnerability was and so this is one way you could do it is to manually you know clone your project uh, set one of these uh, into your dev dependencies or dependency depending on whether it was affecting your build process or the actual code you were writing and then you could npm install it you'll get a new package lock json you could check that in and that will clear it out However, uh, GitHub has provided another way to do that, and let me show you how that works. So here's a way you can you can also mitigate this. So you can go into security, and you can turn on this automated security fixes. So you can see I've already turned mine on. If you go in there and this isn't turned on, it I think it'll say, you know, not automated or something. But I, I've turned it on for this repo, this per repo, and what nothing happens right away, but over time. A, a set of pull requests is generated. So if I 
look over here at pull requests. So I set this a few days ago. And you should get some email. It's called Dependabot is the name of the bot that is running through and doing making these pull requests. And basically the pull request is just going to modify your package lock JSON. So you're not really changing any of the code you've written. It won't change anything you've built. Um, but if you go if you if you accept their pull request and usually it's pretty easy to do because it's just a change in package uh, lock. Um, so if I go in here, I see I've got two pull requests. They're both dealing with Lodash. And Lodash is just a, a library of JavaScript helper functions generally. Um, and so if I look in here, I see that it has created this Dependabot has done this pull request for me. And then I'm just going to say merge. And it's basically just going to update in, in my package lock 460 to 461. So I'll do that, and then I'll confirm the merge. And that leaves me with, uh, let's see, yes. And so that looks good. And then it shows that it's merged. So now I go back to my pull request, and I only have one now. And I'll, go, I'll do the same thing here. So I will go in here and I will merge this pull request, confirm it. Again, it's just updating something in package lock. And now that clears my pull request and I am good to go. And if I go back here, it should have, it clears my security vulnerability. So this is a way you can do your maintenance. The thing is when you're doing these um, merge requests up on the cl uh, cloud like this, be sure you always pull and reinstall do npm install again so that you're you know delete you know so next time you go to work on this project you'll want to like i would delete the the local node modules and the local package lock and npm install so you're getting the latest versions of everything and um, not having to deal with any you know don't start developing if there if you would generate any get merge issues so um, that's probably the easiest way to take care of this all right